In this video, I want to go through and try to fix an annoying little bug that we left off in the previous video. So if I pick up, you know, some of these items here, and I click once and click again, as you can see, I'm trying to use the last remaining, you know, item here in our stack, but it's not going away. So what we want to happen is, well, let me rephrase that. What we started doing in the previous video in our update function, we set it up so we trigger remove item if it is necessary. So what we want to do is we want to iterate through our current inventory. Well, let me rephrase that, our current grid inventory, and then see which one, you know, for example, is valid, which one isn't valid. Kind of do a comparison to see, you know, what all we need to remove. And I've been thinking about this because I almost wonder if it would be a better route to inside of our struct here, have a variable that contains the row and the column. So that way, when we remove an item, we know which row and which column we can try to remove from. So for example, if, let's, uh, let's see, how can I do this as an example? If we, let me go actually, I think it's in our character. This is the first video of the day. When we add and update our inventory widget, you know, we go through the should add new inventory item. Otherwise, if we do not add, we trigger update. So when we go to use the item, we trigger update. Update's then gonna go through. We're gonna check and see if the length of the array is less than the total number of items. So because we were getting rid of our bread, we would technically have zero items while this would be one. So let me rephrase that. When we pick up an item, we have two. So total number of items is two. I click and I click. Now our array and our character here only has one element in it, which would be just the med kit. But it's going to still think that total number of items is two. So when it runs this, it's going to say, hey, our array is now smaller than our total number of items. So this is going to be true, in which case we call remove item. We just don't have a way to tell which item we actually need to remove. So I'm just going to try to wing this here and remove item. I'm going to do a for each loop over our current inventory. And I guess for now, we'll just do break, just in case we, for some reason, have to use it. And I also want to get the grid inventory on top of that. So what I want to do is on each element, I want to loop through the grid inventory. And assuming the item class in the inventory is not null, then I want to do a comparison to see, you know, if it exists. So if it's not null and it doesn't exist in here, well, then I kind of want to go through and remove it. So let's see, should we remove, loop through this? Or actually, I think we should loop through the grid inventory first. So we're going to go ahead and get our grid inventory. Oops, not set it. We're going to do a get. And we want to get the children. So let's do get. Here we have get all children, which gives us an array of those panel widgets. So let's do a for each. We'll go ahead and do it with a break. And on each element, we want to cast it to, I don't know why I keep doing that, but I can just press control space. And apparently I can't. We want to cast it to our inventory item widget, which contains our data. So let's do a cast to w underscore inventory item. And from here, we can split this. Wait, no, we have to get the... Let's see, what's the function called? Get item data. So I think we just search for item data. Yep, get item data. It'll come up so we can split this. And we just want to do a check for is valid on the data item class. So if it's not valid, obviously it's going to be an empty slot. So let's perform a branch like so. So this allows us to kind of start working, so to speak. So let's crunch this up a bit. Okay, so we have a loop through our current grid. So what's visually, you know, in our inventory, not what is our actual inventory. So we can go through and we can compare with our current inventory. So I'm going to drag off of you and let's do a for each. And actually, let's do a for each with break. Move that over here, and I want to clean up 
this pen. All right. So now in here, we have our element, we have our item class and all that fun stuff. We want to iterate through and see if an item was found. So let's create a local variable. It's going to be a Boolean. So let's do item, of course, it's not letting me type. Let's call it item was found, or item is, uh, let's do item is in inventory. That's a better name. And we're going to leave it as false. So we want to compare this item class to the array element item class. So what we can do is we can split this. We have our array element, so let's compare it. So let's do an equals, like so, and plug that in. And let's perform a branch. So if it's true, because it equals it, we want to do is item, or item is an in inventory. We want to set it to true. And plug it in. And then what we can do is we can run through and perform a break because we no longer need to run through any more of those elements. So let's clean up the in a bit here, like so. And then we also want to make sure after this is completed, we set it to false. So we want to reset it back to false. Or better yet, let's actually do a get because we want to compare it and remove it if that's the case. I got myself a little confused. So we want to disable, or not disable, what do you call it? Uh, remove that element, so to speak. But we don't necessarily want to remove it. Instead, we just want to wipe the item data from it. So that way there's nothing in there regarding it, so we disable the button. So if the item is inventory, let's do a branch, plug it into completed. Item is an inventory. If it's false, we want to get rid of it. So we have our button right here. Let's actually go to that class. Go to graph, and here we have disable button. So for disable button, when we actually disable it, what I want to do is I want to wipe item data. So I just want to clear it so that it's just nothing. So let's do a set and plug it in and that's it. So that item is now empty. It contains nothing. It contains no class information. It contains none of this correct stuff. So back in here, we grab this item here. We want to call disable button and plug it in for false. Okay, let's see what happens. So pick it up, click, click, and it's gone. Click, click, and let's just pick up the rest of these. And now we're on the second one. So this is still having an issue, but we can fix that, I think, relatively easy. So out of curiosity, I'm going to try something. Pick it up, use it. Pick it up, goes to there. Little stacks. And we have to, well, what we're going to do is we need to figure out a way to tell which slot is going to be open. So that's the problem we are currently facing. So we have our current row and our current column. So that one is essentially which item we are going to be placing it in. So what I want to do is let's go to add item. Whenever we go through and add an item, Let's see, we have child, we go through, yada, yada, yada. I instead want to do a check. So instead of going off the current row and the current column, I want to start at the beginning and go until there is an empty slot. So that's going to fix where the item gets placed. But we'll do that in a separate video because we now have our item being removed and cleared out from our inventory as well as our actual widget. Uh, we can confirm that real quick by testing on the client just to make sure it works there. I always want to do that first. Let's pick these on up. One, two, it goes away. I can't click it. Same thing there. And I'm assuming we have the same problem, which we do. Okay, so we know it's good to go for that aspect. We just have to fix the placement of where it gets set. So that's where we're going to modify this. So we're going to kind of increment through each row and figure out which one has, well, nothing. So like which one is an empty slot. So that's what we're gonna do in the next video.
So that's going to be it for this one. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.